So I was chatting with Verizon and we're basically we're discussing a uh, connection situation. Currently I have Verizon's uh, 100 megabytes uh, up and down, which basically is it's, it's not even available anymore. So this is our download speed, 112, upload is 118. Before that, I had 50 megabytes per second, which that's also not available anymore. So, you know, I've been with Verizon for years, okay? I've been with Verizon files for years. I basically explained to them, like, hey, this is what I want to do. I want to stream, I want to game, and I got other devices. So they was like, okay, cool. Right now you have 100 megabytes per second up and down. What we're going to do is we're going to give you that gigabyte connection. So I was expecting Verizon to say, okay, we're gonna have to upgrade your router, uh, as well as, you know, some other equipment. The lady told me that basically, what we need to do is replace the cable, and that way you can be able to get that gigabyte speed. Then she asks what's the distance between the router and the ONT box, O-N-T. I could be pronouncing it wrong, but it's basically the box that uh, converts the fiber uh, signal. But she asks, you know, is it six feet? Your router, six feet from the actual Verizon fiber box. I'll just say Verizon fiber box. So I was just like, uh, yeah. <laughs> and the reason why I said that is because she said that I would be actually charged to have a technician to come on site to do some cabling. And I was just like, yeah, six feet, That's six feet. <laughs> no, daggone well, it's not six feet, okay? What we're gonna actually end up having to do is we're going to need to purchase a longer length cat six cable the actual Verizon fiber box is connected it's receiving power from the light the light switch it's it's hard to explain i'll just show you guys above here golly it's so bright but as you can see right there that right there is plugged into this light and that's going out to the Verizon box which is going all the way out there the black cable right there that's the coax cable so that coax cable is going to here okay which is then going up and around and all the way around the naughty pine baby going down here which is then going all the way around to our Verizon internet box the isp router is capable of providing a gigabyte speed so that's cool however we need to replace a cable so i'm quite interested what it's going to look like back here what other options do we have the only other option of cable that i can see that we may be able to use is this wan port here so i'll be quite interested to see if the we basically would take a Cat6 cable and plug that cable from here to the actual Verizon fiber box. Right now, I am on my way back from Home Depot. I went to go pick up some concrete patch. We're going to drill out a uh, bigger hole that our coax cable is currently uh, going through, which the coax cable is providing connectivity to our ISP router. So the cable that I got is a Cat8 uh, and it's a 50 foot, which I bought from Amazon because you get the 54 cables for 20 bucks versus going to the store, paying $100 uh, for a 50 foot cable. So it's your choice, it's your choice. Hopefully this will improve our live stream and gaming performance. So Verizon Fios router, it's capable of providing ethernet speed. I know it's crazy because look how thin this thing is. Just look at how thin this thing is. It's, this bad boy is thin. You would think that I need something real bulky. <laughs> nah, this will do it. But as you can see, this red light basically means that we don't have any uh, internet connection. And the reason being is because I already did the uh, upgrade, the ethernet upgrade to this of which this coax cable is basically it's no longer providing connectivity 
totally forgot to tell you guys this. So basically, after you contact Verizon to basically inform them that you want to upgrade your services or connection uh, from whatever connection that you may have, you may have 100 megabytes uh, per second connection too. So say for instance, you want to upgrade to the gigabyte connection and basically you go through the steps with Verizon, they check your account. They also check your hardware to see if your Verizon internet router is compatible to send that type of connection. If it is, uh, cool. If it's not, they'll recommend that, you know, you will have to replace the router that you have, which may, may come at a, you know, some additional fees. But once you get that situation uh, completed, then what they'll do is, I believe it's, they'll send you an email or text message. And basically it will be a link to Verizon website to activate your gigabyte connection on your internet router. You want to wait until you get all the hardware that Verizon says you need, uh, which basically, honestly, if you got the same router that I have, all you need is the ethernet connection. That's all you need is a Cat6 ethernet cable. Once you have that Cat6 ethernet cable, you click on that Verizon link and you can activate the services, which basically is next, next, next. And then it'll go through, Verizon will go through its prompt, uh, changing settings on your router which one important thing to note there is that once you actually click that link to activate the services for the gigabyte connection basically what it's doing is it's reconfiguring your verizon router from a coax cable to a ethernet cable to provide that connection again only do the activation once you have everything at home once you're actually ready i bought my um Cat6, my 50 footer, I bought it for, how much was I? $20, I think it was like 20, 20, 20 or, more than likely probably was $20 off of Amazon. I can't remember the actual price off the top of my head, but it was far much cheaper. And it's far much cheaper to buy a Cat6 or Cat8 cable online versus going to the store, because when you go to the store, you're paying a premium price. So, again, it's up to your discretion if you want to actually corner a cable online or if you want to wait for Verizon cable to come because, you know, that Verizon Cat 6 six footer cable still hasn't arrived this day. I might, I might try to throw shade. I'm just trying to say, Verizon, you know, you owe me some money. <laughs> you owe me $50 for the agony of waiting. <laughs> I'm just kidding. But they, they do, they do owe me $50 though, because I still haven't received that cable. Oh, by the way, guys, if you are not a subscriber to my channel, please hit that subscribe button and that like button. It will truly, truly, truly help out my channel and must believe it that I definitely do appreciate all my subscribers, especially my day one subscribers. Man, I love y'all. So we can disconnect this coax cable. And what we need to do is take an Ethernet cable, okay? And you're basically just going to put that Ethernet cable to the LAN port. So that white port right there, that's the LAN port. So that's the WAN port right there, as you can see. So you're just going to basically plug that up to there. Let me just show you an example. All right, and then you're going to run that cable this cable to your actual, your aunt's box. So I'll show you exactly where you're gonna run it. I'm gonna try to keep my ISP router here. So I'm actually gonna have to see if I can run a uh, 50 foot Cat8 cable from here and all the way outside my house because my uh, aunt box is outside the house, it's not inside. So honestly, what you guys are gonna need is ethernet cable, ISP router if it's in the house you probably need a 25 foot it depends on exactly where your ISP router is as you see mine's my ISP router is way far away from the actual Verizon ONT box this is the box that I'm referring to there's a uh, device inside that we need to basically bring our Ethernet connection from inside the house outside the house run it up through here and connect it to the device, which will then inside the house, it will connect to our WAN port on the back of the 
Verizon ISP router. There's, that's probably gonna be a 12 and that might be a nine or we can use a Phillips or flathead. But basically what we wanna do is open this up so that way we can get access to the, the device. This is my coax cable. So let's see what I'm gonna do. Take my uh, a drill bit and screw through there because it looks like it just goes through here and we can just disconnect here and push it down through the house so we'll see we'll see what we can do Get this hole open. Slow. Let's see, she's almost in there. I don't know if this thing is loud enough. Oh, yeah, it is. Drill the unit. Inside the house, it looks like we got outside the house done. I just gotta go inside the house and do it. <laughs> As you can see, we have our Verizon box. It's now closed. Oh, man, oh man. This has been a lesson learned. But I saved more money doing this job myself versus having an actual technician come on site to do it. The last night, I uh, had a Cat 8 cable connected but I wasn't receiving a signal and when I had it connected before it was in and out so today I had called Verizon and I asked them you know what type of cable do you use uh, that you connect from the ONT device to your Verizon Fios uh, router and the lady said cat 6 Amazon brought out a cat 6 cable this morning and it works fine so it seems like if you use a cat eight cable it's gonna basically establish some sort of grounded connection so it's not not really compatible i'm pretty sure there's probably some other guys out there that made 
have been able to use a caddy cable, but me, nah. Here's the Verizon Fios box. This is the white cable that's going to our Verizon ONT box, optical network terminal. It's connected to the WAN port. You see that white port? It's, that's, it's, it's just that simple. <laughs> you just plug up that ethernet cable to the WAN port. It's honestly that simple. You see that WAN port right there? It's that simple. Now I still got work to do. Uh, this is the cable. It's going through here, outside this room. Through there. I gotta make it pretty, but right now it's not pretty. And all the way up through. Let me step on this ladder real quick. From up here, through there, and to right through there. Kind of bring it back. There we go, so you guys can see that hole right there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cock that hole up. So this is what we're using to close up this hole. Got this hole set up from Home Depot. Works perfectly. Father said, yep, this is the right stuff, and you're good to go. See so if we can get it closed. Yep, there we go. Made it a little mess right there, but uh, for the most part, she's good to go. We're going to let that cure up for roughly 24 hours, and then I'll probably shave it off a little bit get her all nice and dolled up. But for the most part, she's looking good, baby. Looking good. Cat 6E Ethernet cables, exclusively from Amazon. It's for my video rig that does the live stream and video encoding. Got my workstations up and running, which they're connected to the Verizon Fios router so let's see what type of speed we get from this rig which is connected directly to the Ryzen files router and then we're going to see how what speed we're getting from our gaming rig which is connected to our asus gaming router so as you guys can see we got a speed test going on this is the video rig that's connected directly to our verizon files box so that's getting 734 as far as download and it's getting a 900 megabytes per second upload almost a thousand and there you guys got it that's our download and that's our upload speed all right so this is our gaming rig it's a little bit under again the gaming rig is connected directly to our asus router so the download and upload speed would be different, okay? Different routers. So that's for our gaming rig, which is still pretty darn good. So we're gonna do a 4K video from YouTube. As you can see, 4K, all right? It's not gonna show you 4K visually, but at least you guys will be able to get the logistics. I do not open copyrights to the music. I do not open any copyrights to the music. Just in case there's music in here. We're gonna adjust this from 1080p to 2160p 4K, all right? All right, it's been adjusted. Again, this is my gaming rig. You guys hear the birds chirping? You see the view? It's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful visual. And it's uh, loading pretty decent. You see that? Pretty decent. So, the ultimate question would be, was it worth it? Was it worth me upgrading to Verizon's gigabyte connection? Yes. Yes, it's worth it. Take a seat, let me take a seat. Let's take this little chair right here, the kids chair. Let's, uh, let's take a seat. The reason why I come up with this response, okay, is because prior to me upgrading to Verizon's gigabyte connection. I had Verizon's 100 megabytes up and 100 megabyte down connection, which was absolutely, <coughs> excuse me, 
How, how do you choke off your tongue? God. With that connection, I was struggling in Call of Duty. Like, there will be times when I'm playing Call of Duty and I would be going through the, you know, the map. Next minute, I would get these crazy frame drops, like, you know, lag, of which I'm running. The guy's coming to me and I'm doing like, it, 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 it. seriously lagging. I'm just like, wow, why? What is going on? Why is it this bad? It was bad. And especially, too, when I would join maps, like, my teammates will already be deployed by the time I get deployed. You know, sometimes. Sometimes we play team, team deathmatch. Sometimes it happens. That wasn't just it, you know. Grand Theft Auto, I seen some lag. These open world games, I would experience, you know, some lag here and there. Call of Duty, I definitely notice it. And it kind of seems like that the lag will honestly start if I'm playing a game and I'm also doing a live stream of which that live stream I'm doing like a 1080p resolution. So uh, that that basically also played a role. Nowadays I do a live stream and I have the capability of, you know, for people that have high-end uh, computers or devices, you guys can actually watch my live stream in 4K. That gigabyte connection made it all possible. I have the computer hardware that's able to perform and it's performing but it was suffering because of the bottleneck connection that i had with 100 megabytes up and 100 megabytes down another thing that you guys also want to pay in mind is that how many devices that you have on your network you know as far as devices that are connected through ethernet and devices that are connected through wireless we're in an age where a lot of people we do a lot of streaming not everybody watches TV from a cable box, such as myself. With all that streaming, that means there's a lot of data that's being piped through. And if you have such a small connection, such as a 100 megabytes up, 100 megabytes down, it's not gonna be able to process the data in a timely manner that you want it to process, so that way you can enjoy it. Now that I have a gigabyte, easy, breezy, beautiful sailing. So guys, if you have any other questions, just let me know. I definitely appreciate your time watching this video, kicking back with me, going through my lessons, learn my you know issues that I experienced on my installation, and uh, hopefully you will be able to uh, perfect your installation um, going forward. When I know guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. If you're not a subscriber to my day one subscribers, I love you. Peace.